From Software has mastered the art of crafting bosses, as well as the ensuing infuriating confrontations. Elden Ring has continued the tradition of legendary bosses, from Bloodborne's Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower to Dark Souls' Nameless King. Elden Ring has over 100 bosses, however several optional bosses stand out due to their overwhelming difficulty. These bosses are memorable, whether they evolve in the middle of a battle or have numerous phases. When you can summon a large number of teammates to fight with and for you, you know a boss fight is difficult. There are summoning indicators sprinkled all throughout the ring, as soon as you enter it, it's strongly advised that you summon all of them. The moment you enter, Starscourge Radon fires magical arrows at you, and he possesses a vast range of attack and movement. He can use lightning to coat his two swords, bringing them down to do crazy damage. After you've reduced his health to a certain level, he'll leap into the air and vanish before crashing down on you like a comet. To access this boss in crumbling Faramazala, you must lie down in a coffin. You wake up to find yourself face to face with Dragonlord Placidusax after a spectacular cutscene in which the boss arena is actually being recreated. Their golden flame breaths swiftly transform into death beams, and they may also unleash crimson lightning. In the middle of the battle, Dragonlord Placidusax will vanish into ash before reappearing from the skies with a sweeping attack using his electrified claw. This fight is both epic and deadly. Commander Nile, despite being an optional boss, prevents you from obtaining a quest item, notably the left half of the Halligtree Medallion. Commander Nile, who is based in Castle Soul, summons two Spectral Knights, one of whom you should deal with initially. Commander Nile summons Whirlwinds, which you must avoid because they deplete your health. When he stomps, he can not only cause frostbite damage, but he can also summon lightning. The optional boss Lichtrigan Fortisax must be defeated in order to fulfill Fia's questline. The Touch Fia option will be available in Deeproot Depths, allowing you to be taken to the boss arena. The annoying thing is that you can't stay under the boss for too long, or you'll get shocked because its body is covered in lightning. The boss can also fire lightning spears that do massive amounts of damage. When working with this supervisor, patience is absolutely a plus. Estelle, natural born of the void, wins the strangest and creepiest boss category in Elden Ring. You hitch a right on a coffin to go closer to the boss region after passing through the easily missed location of the Lake of Rot. To hit you, this twisted dragonfly-like creature fires laser beams and crashes its beaded tail into the ground. It can also create portals that hurl massive rocks at you and snap its sharp pincers to pierce you. It has the ability to launch you into the air, toss you down forcefully, and shower you with meteor showers. Brutal. This boss is a nightmare come true. This boss encounter, which can be found near Volcano Manor on Mount Jelmer, is comparable to Eherm the Giant in Dark Souls 3 and the Storm King from Demon's Souls in that it rewards you with the boss-defeating Serpent Hunter Great Spear near the arena's entrance. Rikard makes his spooky entrance after beating the snake with the spear, pulling his blade from the serpent's mouth. Rikard throws a shower of fiery skulls after you with new sword attacks. He can also bring his sword down, unleashing a raging inferno that you must avoid. When you approach the consecrated snowfield, you'll finally meet Melenia, Blade of Maquella, who has been slapped into Elden Ring promotional posters and looks fierce. Despite the fact that the boss is optional, let's be honest, we all want her armor and weapon. During the fight, you must avoid her strikes at all costs, as each hit allows her to regain health. She transforms into the Goddess of Rot in the second phase, and she can deal Scarlet Rot damage if you stay too close for too long, but she is more susceptible to being staggered. But be careful, if her blows land, she can still recover health.
Moog, Lord of Blood, is found in the basement area of Mogwin Palace and appears to be a pagan god. Despite the fact that it is optional, it is excellent for rune farming because he drops 420,000 runes. He causes a lot of damage with his colossal trident and wide swings. Moog also casts spells, splattering blood on the ground and setting it ablaze. Mid-fight, his wings unfurl from his back and he can perform a spell that drains your health to restore his. Elimer of the Briar can be found in the Altus Plateau in the Shaded Castle, and as soon as he sees you, he does a nasty shield slam. Worst of all, this boss's sword can extend beyond its typical attack area, burning red and giving him tremendous range. It's worth noting that this boss has the ability to grab you, so get out of the path if you notice it coming. When he starts glowing red, it's preferable to hit the dodge button as quickly as possible. The abductor virgins, who sound like Iron Maiden and swing like a pendulum, are another example of pure nightmare fuel. You must first allow yourself to be abducted by an abductor virgin at the lowest level of Royal Lucaria Academy, where you will be sent close to the boss arena. One boss has a wheeled blade, while the other has a pair of sickles that swing back and forth. Both will whirl around like a lethal ballet as they toss their blades at you. Of course, don't let yourself be captured this time. <laughs> 